So hello everyone and welcome back to my channel channel and if you are new to this channel please like share and subscribe so that learn so that we can learn grow and maintain our streak together. So let us see what today's question is about. It is about the the name of the question is distinct the difference and the tags given here as sets, array, map and your structure. So okay. So let us proceed ahead what the question says and let's move on with all the approaches and the code. Okay. Okay. So let us so let us read the question. So it's given an array of length and for each index from i, which is from one to less than equals to n, find the difference between the number of distinct elements in its left and right side of the array. Okay, so that seems an obvious question uh, from the line which I just read. So for each and every index, let's say we are we are at this index. Let's say at three, right? So the number of distinct elements in the left hand side. There are total number of elements that is four. That is distinct. That is the number of elements. Distinct in the left hand side, it's one, and the number of distinct elements in the right, that is one. So one minus one is zero. Similarly, for if I add this index, then you can see the number of distinct elements in the left, that is four and three, that are number is two. And in the right, there is no element, so, so two minus zero, that gives you zero. Okay, that's great. So I hope you have read this question and it's very easy to understand that how the input and output is going. So let us do the same thing what this question is saying. That for each and for each and every i, I will iterate in the left hand side, and then I will iterate in the a right hand side and I will maintain the distinct elements and a data structure to maintain the distinct elements is a set right so that means we have to use a two nested for loop and so the code will look like so the code will look like like let's we will maintain two hash set s1 and s2 for each and every i for i equals to zero i less than n i plus plus this question I don't think it requires a dry run what you have to do we were having three and three so suppose we had this element the number of distinct elements I will store in s1 let's say as one from here to here, I will store in S2. Let's say as S2 will have again one and one minus one will give you zero, right? And for each and every iteration, I will reset this S2 to I will clear it, right? So that is very obvious. So for i equals to zero, first of all, I do not need to store any elements because in the left hand side there is nothing, right? So I will maintain one for loop to calculate to the right hand side. My for loop will start from j equals to i plus one to j less than n and j plus plus. And what I will do, I'll keep on adding the right hand side elements that is a of j. I'm right yeah I'm right so I'll keep on adding it and soon as the addition is finished what I will do that we have this let's say an array list and array list will so it will run inside the first for loop so it will say that al dot add is nothing but s1 dot size minus s2 dot size right and once it stored the answer we have to clear the uh, s2 hash set because it needs to store for the next i th iteration right the uh, right hand side of the next i th iteration so I will say that s2 dot clear right that will do and since we are at from this point from this point to moving this point right so the left hand side has said the s1 should contain this current element right so in simultaneously in in each and every iteration i will add this current element so s1 dot add a of i so this is very clear i don't think i need to show you anything else that's the pseudo code try to run the pseudo code try to code this thing in your editor and let's run it and we will see that how the code is responsing so before running it let us discuss the time complexity as well so it is n square solution clearly it is going for n and it is going for n so that will be an n square solution and let us see the constraint what the constraint is given the constraint is given as 10 power 5 right so the 10 power 5 the maximum time complexity we can code is uh, if i'm not not wrong it is n root n right so i have made a time complexity video on this how you can figure this out you can watch that video to get an intuition on it right so we have 10 n square so and 10 power 5 square it will be 10 power 8 which is definitely greater than 10 power 8 so if we even if this uh, approach is right it will give you the answer but this will not get submitted and it will give you tle right your solution must be in bound of 10 power 8 so let us pause this video i'll pause the video now you also do the same and try to code it yourself take two to three minutes time and then come to the, come back come back to this video again so yes let us do this so i have mentioned the same pseudo code which i explained which i explained during the dry run and it, it it is as it is coded in my code editor and that's the java solution the two set are required for the nested for loop we are adding the right hand side elements in the s2 for each and every iteration we are clearing it and then adding it again for the another iteration right okay so let us wait so 1110 yeah so we got five uh for five cases we got time limit exceeded right so that's what that's what i was looking for to show you guys uh we should also be clear on this part as well so that's the method one for the brute force that goes how should we optimize it right so one thing uh, so we have to identify the repeating steps right so what i am doing is for the ith iteration for the i for let's say i equals to zero right i added all the elements in the right 
right for i equals to 1 i added all the elements again in the right uh, including excluding one of the element right so if i am doing if i am using the same elements again and again just if including the just excluding the current element then why to you then why to maintain a new hash set right why to add keep on adding the elements again and again is s2 why why not just maintain an hash set let's say x and y in y what will happen is let's say we store the counts of each and every uh, each and every integer so it will be 4 1 and 3 2 right so what we're going to do is we will use this hash map and then we will do the thing so how we, how I, how i'm saying is let me show you a dry run we will do use this x and y y will have the all the frequency elements stored in it so it will be a parallel for loop work right now for i equals to 0 what i'm gonna see is let's for for i equals to 0 what i'm gonna see is that i already have i have for i equals to 0 i don't need this element in my right hand side map right so y is nothing but my right hand side hash map and x is nothing but the left hand side hash map i know i do not need this instance of 4 in my right hand side so what i will do first of all i will go for i equals to 0 to i less than an i plus plus so first i will first i will remove my i will remove the ai or let's say not remove i will replace replace ai frequency to uh, by minus minus jo bhi uska frequency hai, like one right so i will just decrement it because we have the single occurrence here right so i will replace it uh first of all here so what the map will be uh, uh will be reduced to it will be four with the frequency zero and three with the frequency two but still this have the size as two right but it should not have as it should not have right so that means if the frequency is going to zero so this will be your one part of four so second part will be if frequency you reduce if it is getting equals to zero then remove that entry right so remove that entry so now the hash map will look like the four the four comma zero entry has been uh, gone and then it just have three comma two right so if it is if it is removed now so now what i need to do is that i already have the the left hash map the s1 that you were maintaining right it will go as it is so it will go as it is so what i need to just say that whenever i i use this element whenever i do all the process at last i was pushing into s1 right i was pushing into s1 so i will do the same at last i will push into s1 at last push current element in s1 so that it can help in the iteration for the next iterations now if it is zero just remove it and now what you have to do you will make let's say one variable that is current answer and you will you will do uh in left we have named it as what s1 or s1 or x right so we will just say that x dot size minus y dot size will be my answer from i equals to zero and then just will be we'll have an array list and in that array list we will add this current answer right so i guess that's the only four step we need to do right so let us look for i equals to zero what would be happening so for i equals to zero your left and right or let's say your x and y would be looking as will have the entry three comma two and in y you will just have four uh yes initially you will nothing had in y so your current answer will be uh what this will be your y and x will have nothing so it will be x size is 0 and y size is 1 so 0 minus 1 it will be minus 1 then at then when the this thing is successful when we got this current answer we will push into x 4 comma 1 so let us decide for i equals to 1 so for i equals to 1 we have this uh, element as 3 so you need so y and x so this is uh, this is left and this is right so in the uh, sorry the y is representing the right and the x is representing the left so what you need to do now for i equals to 1 the element is 3 you need to decrease this frequency from 3 comma 2 it will become 3 comma 1 and in the x you already have 4 comma 1 right so you need to now you have the element distinct element comes in the left and right so we'll just do one, the size of difference it will 1 minus 1 that is 0 so 0 will be answered for i equals to 1 right and in the and in then push the the current element that it will be if you push it it will be 3 comma 1 right so for i equals to 2 again you have the element 3 you again have to decrement the frequency of your y right so it will 3 comma 1 to reduce to 3 comma 0 right this is our last addition please bear with me and 
4 and x is already having 4 comma 1 and 3 comma 1 so it, it already having two distinct elements so it so, so since the frequency has decrement to 0 we will remove this entry from our this uh, map the right hand side map right so it will be 0 minus 2 that is uh, so it will be it is left minus right right so left is representing by x so it will be 2 minus 0 that is 2 and then we add this element as well in x so it will 3 comma 1 will be will be updated to 3 comma 2 right that is it i hope uh, you, you have gotten a very good idea from this Brian as well so now pause this video and try to code this approach yourself i have mentioned the pseudo comments what you have to do uh, it is your choice the the language which you are using c plus plus or java uh, use this comments to follow uh, the approach follow the code and then let's meet again in five to six minutes okay okay so that's the code i have written for the first point that decrease the count of the element because we do not need it we are processing for this element right so we decreased it and then what we are doing if it becomes zero then you have to remove its existence because then the size will be incremented by one if you if you do not remove it right now store the answer that is left hash map size minus right hash map size add this answer into your array list which is the return type of this main function and then since you have processed the current element push it in the left hand side map as the same thing we are doing in the s1 in a brute force approach at the last we are doing s1 dot add a of i here it will do we have just uh, uh, changed the name to x so that's it let us compile and run we will see for ourselves that our expected output and uh, our output matches or not and at the time it is getting compiled let us let us discuss about the time complexity as well time complexity will be nothing but o of n we are using one for loop and regarding the space complexity we will be are using two hash map for size n right so it will be o of 2n so the output has been uh, resulted the same as we expected let us hit the submit button and since it's o of n then it will be compiled in 10 power 5 which is definitely less than 10 power 8 and this solution should get submitted so let us wait for that and then we will end this video okay so that's great it has been successfully submitted so the overall summary is we discussed one approach with the o of n square with this space complexity o of 2n the next optimized approach was why why are we adding again and again we recognize that this is the rep repetitive steps that we are doing for this nested for loop so we just made an entire map using a parallel for loop you can see this and then we when so when we are processing the current element we are just removing that occurrence from our entire map again and again right for each and every iteration but that, that does not require a for loop that's just require o of one time right so that is it for today's video for the last initiative i took that i need to share the c++ code as well so let me give you that as well it's very simple if i don't give you you'll be able to do it but let us let me give you so yeah on the right hand side is the java code both approaches i showed you and in the left hand side the c++ code you can use it for your reference that's it for today's video let us meet in the next video of day 150 so we are about to complete our day 150 that's great so till then you can connect to me on linkedin on instagram i have mentioned those uh, description link you can also fork this dsa repository to get help with the i can see 26 stars that's great so you can get help with the source code from this repository it is very large you can also um, maybe use it for your reference maybe you will the question you uh, you are stuck with you can just write control f here and you can search for any question and maybe you will get the questionnaire because this repository has more than four to five hundred of questions i think so that's it let's end this video we'll meet again in tomorrow till then keep learning keep going goodbye and take care